Alors, bonjour. Bienvenue and welcome to Banff National Park and the Banff Park Museum National Historic Site. My name is uh, Bill Fisher. I'm the uh, Vice President of Operations in Western and Northern Canada for Parks Canada, and I'll be your MC for today's event. I also have the privilege of uh, representing the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada on behalf of Ms. Donna Joy Zwicker. Uh, Donna, may you just raise your hand there. And uh, Donna's brand new. She's just recently appointed as Alberta's representative to the board. And uh, she's with us today attending her first official Historic Sites and Monuments Board ceremony. So, welcome. <laughs> I'd also like to um, welcome uh, Mayor Sorensen, Your Worship, thank you, and um, Ms. Michelle Rempel, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Ministry of the Environment. So I'm honored to uh, introduce the official party for today's event. J'aimerais uh, vous présenter les invités d'honneur de l'événement d'aujourd'hui. Uh, seated to my left, the Honorable Peter Kent, Minister of the Environment and Minister Responsible for Parks Canada. Uh, Mr. Har uh, Mr. Harvey Locke, Trustee of the Eleanor Luxton Foundation. And Ms. Pam Dino, the Superintendent of the Banff Field Unit. First elected to the House of Commons in 2008, Minister Kent was sworn into Cabinet as Canada's first ever Minister of State of Foreign Affairs for the Americas, and in January 2011, he was appointed Canada's Environment Minister and Minister Responsible for Parts Canada. Please welcome the Honourable Peter Kent. Thank you, Bill, Harvey, Pam, Michelle, uh, Donna, Your Worship. Uh, to everyone here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, je suis ravi uh, d'être ici uh, ce matin. I'm delighted to be back in Banff. Um, I've spent, uh, I've had any number of visits uh, in Banff over the years, going back probably the first time when I came as a little child with my parents uh, in the uh, in the early 1950s, but. Uh, well, I don't have time on this trip to uh, visit all of the special places and to uh, strap on the boards for a couple of runs. Um, uh, I'm delighted to be here with you today, and particularly um, for, this, uh, for this event. Um, there is abundant evidence, and I think everyone uh, accepts this, uh, to show that bison inhabited this, uh, this region for thousands of years, and we're now, today, about to launch a process that may eventually see a wild plains bison herd uh, returned to the natural habitat here in Banff National Park. Sur le versant est des rocheuses, comme dans la clairie, les prairies, le bison des plaines était l'herbivore qui prédominait. Il aidait à équilibrer un écosystème et soutenait la culture des peuples autochtones notamment les Premier Nations Stony Nakoda et les Siksiska. In both the eastern slopes of the Rockies and across the prairies, the plains bison were the dominant herbivore. They helped keep an ecosystem in balance and they sustained the culture of Aboriginal peoples, including the Stony Nakoda and the Siksika First Nations. Reintroducing bison to Banff National Park, while it is a simple idea, is in fact a complex process uh, with numerous potential impacts on other species, on the landscape, uh, and on communities. Parks Canada already has experience in this regard. Five years ago, uh, the bison were reintroduced to Grasslands National Park in Saskatchewan after a 120-year absence. Uh, we've learned from the Grasslands experience that uh, success of bison reintroduction depends Minor technicality. It is a minor. <laughs> Gravity can be a terrible thing. 
We learned from uh, uh, the grasslands experience that success of bison reintroduction depends on engagement, it depends on agreement, and it depends on cooperation. From those like uh, Mr. Harvey Locke, uh, who are steadfast champions, and from others who have uh, legitimate questions and legitimate concerns. We want to fully understand the challenge, and we want to hear from everyone who wishes to share their views with us about the issues, and also about most important of all, the solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is coming, I believe, to try to bring back the bison to Banff National Park. Uh, and I would like to formally announce that the first major step toward that goal begins here today. Over the coming months, we will conduct a broad consultation to consider all of the potential impacts both in the park and on neighboring lands so that we can consider and that we can address possible solutions. Uh, we will work closely with the Luxton Foundation, with First Nations, with the province of Alberta, and with a range of other partners and stakeholders to develop a bison restoration plan for Banff National Park. This is a real opportunity for Canadians to play their part in the stewardship of Canada's first national park. Mesdames et Messieurs, j'ai à cœur le rôle que jouent les parcs nationaux les aires marines de conservation et les lieux historiques nationaux du Canada à aider les Canadiens et les Canadiennes à cultiver des liens avec nos lieux naturels et historiques extraordinaires. En réinstaurant la, le bison des plaines, nous remettons en contact une espèce qui était en voie de disparition et l'habitat qui était le sien pendant des millénaires. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel passionately about the role played by uh, Canada's national parks, by our marine conservation areas and our national historic sites in connecting Canadians to our amazing natural and historical treasures. Uh, with the eventual reintroduction of the Plains bison, we would also reconnect a species that was once on the verge of extinction to a habitat where it had previously ranged for thousands of years. We do this for environmental reasons, uh, because we've seen, we've seen how the bison restored an ecological balance that had been lost in Grasslands National Park, for example. We do it for cultural reasons, uh, as a way to acknowledge and to pay tribute to the symbiosis between the plains bison and the peoples for whom the animal was both a spiritual symbol and a necessity of life. And we would restore the bison as well to help our visitor experience firsthand to, uh, to see one of the most majestic animals in Canada uh, and an abiding symbol of the Canadian West. Ladies and gentlemen, the reintroduction of wild bison is made possible because 100 years ago, the, the Dominion Parks Branch was created. And this organization that became a few decades later Parks Canada was the world's first national park. For 100 years, Parks Canada, as a National Park Service, has been at the forefront of global efforts to preserve natural species and restore their ecological integrity, including protecting keystone species. <coughs> La Division des Parcs du Dominion a travaillé sans relâche pour protéger le riche patrimoine national du Canada et uh, encourager les Canadiens et les Canadiennes de partout à apprécier et à vivre les trésors nationaux du Canada et à en profiter. The Dominion Parks branch has worked tirelessly to protect Canada's diverse national heritage and encourage Canadians everywhere to appreciate, to experience, and to enjoy all of Canada's national treasures. Created in 1911, the Dominion Parks branch, under the leadership of James B. Harkin, became a leading conservation body, both nationally and internationally. Influenced by the rise of conservation movement and the rise of tourism as a significant part of Canadian economic development, the Dominion Parks branch linked together exceptional natural and historic Canadian landscapes, giving them a shared identity as Dominion Parks. The Dominion Parks branch coordinated the expansion of a system of protected places in Canada setting in place the foundation for today's network of heritage places and initiating a tradition of national and international leadership in their management, in their conservation, and their presentation.
Today, as you know, Parks Canada spans the nation, protecting Canada's diverse and significant national heritage and natural places, and encouraging Canadians and visitors from around the globe to appreciate, experience, and enjoy all of Canada's national treasures. I'm proud today to commemorate the importance of the creation of the Dominion Parks branch and the birth of Parks Canada as an event of national historic significance. We recognize Parks Canada's 100 years of world leadership in conservation education and visitor experience programs, and on the recommendation of the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada, it is a great honor for me today to unveil a plaque formally recognizing the creation of the Dominion Parks branch as a national historic event. Thank you. Merci. Our clock is globally known for his work on wilderness, national parks, and large landscape thinking. Representing the Luxton Foundation, please welcome Mr. Harvey Lark. Thank you. I'm very, very honored to be involved in this ceremony, in this building, with this group of people. Um, cet immeuble est vraiment important. C'est un des plus importants musées originaires de l'Amérique du Nord, et c'est un des immeubles écologiques euh, euh, innovateurs qui date de 120 ans. Tu peux se promener dans ce, cet immeuble sans lumière et voir toutes les expositions. C'est vraiment remarquable, et c'est un trésor culturel qu'on ne connaît pas assez. Um, this is the world's third oldest national park that we're in. We do have the world's third oldest national park service. And this museum is one of the oldest museums in North America. Our parks are among our greatest cultural achievements. And J.B. Harkin, who founded the National Park Service of Canada, is one of the world's great conservation heroes. We do very well to honor that today and to remember that for the future. But it also creates a challenge for us. We stand on the shoulders of giants. What will we do now to emulate what they have done? Our job is to protect the things that they created, to make new ones, and also to put the pieces back that are missing or that have been damaged. We need to restore species and processes. That's part of the mandate that the Park Service took on with the change to the National Parks Act in the year 2000. Bison were in this valley just before Banff Park was created, but they were rendered extinct before the park could get here. They were in this valley for a very long time, as the minister pointed out. They are a missing part of this ecosystem, and they are a missing part of the experience of visiting Banff National Park. Bison belong here. We need to bring them back, and I'm awfully excited, Minister, that that's what you announced today. We have done this before in Banff Park. The elk, the animal in the middle of the room there, was actually rendered locally extirpated from Banff Park 200 years ago. We introduced them, reintroduced them from Yellowstone about 100 years ago. Yellowstone National Park lost its wolves, and they reintroduced wolves from Alberta and British Columbia about 15 years ago. Now it's our turn to introduce bison to Banff. In Africa, the white rhinoceros, like the bison was almost ready to extinct, and it has been reintroduced all over parks and reserves all over Africa. The near extinction of bison in the late 1870s was a symbol of getting the relationship with nature very, very wrong. It also inspired the conservation movement. We brought the species back from the edge of extinction through captive breeding programs, and in the 21st century, it's now time to restore it as part of the landscape, as a natural ecological process. And when we do, it is one of the most amazing things in the world to watch a bison calf frolic in a meadow. You can see that further south in the Yellowstone to Yukon Corridor in Yellowstone National Park. You can see it in Grand Teton National Park. And I'm very excited to know that there will soon be a day when we can all see that in Banff National Park. Thank you so much.
To learn more about bison and why they belong in Banff National Park, visit our website, bisonbelong.ca.